Hello everybody and how are you today? My name is Maria Gillen and I'm the Storyteller in Residence for Kerry Writers Museum. Happy Beothana, Beothana, Honey Ye of Gunlair, Accordia, that you might have a beautiful Beothana. We started last night with the Celtic cousins and there were stories from all the Celtic lands, from Scotland, from Wales and from Ireland. And of course, we have many traditions. Probably the most important tradition from Beothana is the lighting of the fires on the hill of Ishnuk. This year, for the second year, David Clark will be lighting that fire on behalf of the whole island of Ireland. Thank you, David. This story is a story woven from the wisdoms and the traditions of Beothana here in Ireland. Maraid lived in Listol in a beautiful white cottage left to her by her grandmother. She smiled now as she looked out her window across the road and the neighbours waving. They were putting out the little yellow flowers on the lintel of the windows on the thresholds of the door. For the tradition goes that the she can't pass those beautiful flowers. The fair folk, they can't pass once you put the flowers down. Anybody who had animals, dogs, or even geese and sheep and cows, they adorned those animals with the same flowers to keep them safe from the time when the veils thin at Beothana. It was the time of renewal. And Maraid looked out now and across the road and smiled at all her grandmother's stories. Oh, she remembered them well. Make sure not to give anything out of your house on May Day, she would say, totally different from the legacy of honouring the traveller for every other day in Ireland. Don't give anything out, for it will leave your house for the rest of the year, her grandmother would say earnestly. But if you leave things outside of the garden gate and people find them, that's okay, because it's beyond, beyond the boundary. So she looked now and she could see the scones and the sandwiches left at the gates of her neighbours for anybody hungry that might pass that day. She'd gotten up early and went up to the highest hill in their area, washing her face in the dew of the grass because that was the tradition. She couldn't remember why that was the tradition, but she knew that the lovely dew felt soft on her face and she felt the better for it. And she felt better to get up at sunrise and to look down on her beautiful listol and to thank heavens that this is where she had spent her COVID time. Then she saw something. She saw something in her garden. She saw someone moving and it looked as if they were moving in a snake-like way. Then they moved to the next garden. Oh my goodness, what was going on? She pulled on her shoes quickly and she ran down the hill towards her own place. She was about to roar out and get help from the neighbours when she thought better of it. Best to know what they're up to, her grandmother's voice whispered in her own mind. So she went around to the back of the houses and this person had moved on now six houses down and they were pulling a rope behind them across the fresh dew on the grass. Tarkum Makushla, Tarkum, Tarkum, went the words up from this person. Tarkum Makushla, and then it was as if they knew, as if they knew that they were being watched. Who's that? They almost said with their still air. And then they carried on again, singing along to themselves. Tarkum. Tarkum Mokushla Tarkum Come to me, come to me, my darling, come to me. 
were the words. When the person got to the last house, Maureen went in on her hands and knees, making her way to the edge of the hedge, knowing that this person and their rope would soon pass by. And as they did, she took out the scissors that she always had her in her pocket for the herb gathering, and she cut a piece of that rope, remembering the old stories. The woman went on her way and went off out into the next village. And Maraid, she took that piece of rope. She went into her own house, put it into a barrel full of May spring water, sprinkled in the yellow flowers and said, Tarkum, come to me. Tarkum, Mokushla, come to me, my darling. And then she thought no more of it just thinking that she would have broken the rhythm of the words of that woman and the rope that she was carrying and the ill feelings that she might be spreading in the gardens of her house and that of her neighbours. But she gave it no more thought than that. At the end of the evening, her aunt came to visit. How are you, Mara? she said. Come in and have a cup of tea and wait until I tell you about the strange goings on today. Tell me, said Mara. And so she recounted everything that I've told you. Check the barrel, said Mara. Check it now. And they took the lid off the barrel. You'll never guess what was inside in that barrel. It was full to the brim with the best Kerrygold butter, the butter that leaves these shores and goes all the way to America, even these days. It is the wealth of our land. It is the kiss of our sun. And Maraid's barrel was full to the brim. <gasps> My goodness, she said, what was that? And Moira said, never discount on Shannos, never discount the old ways, for you never know what magic, what triukta is lurking therein. That woman will go home tonight with her broken rope and there will be nothing at all that she can do about her empty barrel of butter for the whole year. Be koramuk, my friends, be careful, Love one another, hold one another up in these times. And if you see someone with a rope going through your garden in the early light of the day, chanting Tarkum, Tarkum, especially on May Day, make sure to get a snip of that rope.